Hi, welcome to another Jet Air Share and Ship. I'm Rob Miotti. I'm here with Jay Prado, and we're talking about the M2000 today. The M stands for mass flow, the 2000 for the number of millimeters required for an installation for excellent drying. Jay, tell us a little bit about mass flow, if you would. Absolutely. So mass flow is a term Jet Air uses, and it's referring to not single file, essentially. Oh, easy enough. Yeah. So sometimes customers have their uh, drying done in single file and sometimes in mass flow. When do they use which? Right, so single file is typically used in label drying applications. Uh, say an extreme of that would be pressure sensitive labels with cold fill bottles. Uh, you're gonna need to be really close up uh, and you're not gonna be able to utilize this machine. This so, has a different purpose. So when, when do they use this? Right, so mass flow again, meaning uh, many containers across a wider belt. Mm. You're typically gonna use this for post packaging or case packaging issues. Now that seems hard to do, so we're gonna talk about side drying in a minute, but before we do, let's open up the top of this and see what's inside. Sure. So it, this looks a lot like a standard system. We have our centrifugal blower. We have our poly filter element here, making sure clean air comes in, clean air comes out. And right here where our VFD would normally be, we have an MCP. We'll talk a little bit about that later. It has to do with our controls in the machine. So one of the biggest features in this top cabinet though is the sound attenuation. Wow, so usually it's pretty loud in there. Yes. What decibel levels are we talking about and how does that help? So if we didn't have all of the sound abating equipment we have in here, you're looking at about 100 dBA. Yikes. Yeah. With it in there, you're looking at that OSHA standard 85 dBA. 85? That's measured in OFE, right? Correct. So that is an open field environment. Great. Well, let's take a look at the bottom. Alrighty. And this is the drying chamber or drying cabinet, yes, right? Yes, with a beautiful entrance here. Okay, so I can see stuff going on on the walls. I can see stuff going on in the drain pan. Tell us what's happening there. Sure, much like the top of the cabinet, we always wanna make sure we take care of sound. So we have high density plastic. Obviously you don't use foam in the wet area. So this is gonna serve the same purpose as that foam and continue to bring that sound level down. And it gets pretty loud in here too. Yeah, it's about the same as the top. Oh, okay, so staying within OSHA standards. Correct. Excellent, and now I see the drain pan's got some stuff happening. Right, so the drain pan, you guys know what a drain pan is, uh, is gonna collect the water. We have atriums inside there. They're gonna collect the big pieces of product that fall out or anything like that. Okay. And then on either side, you see the two inch NPT drains, very easy to hook up. Nice. Uh, I also noticed that the hose is uh, that same smooth wall inner hose, so it doesn't get turbulent. And it's feeding uh, some air knives in here, what's going on inside this conveyor? Did you buy this conveyor and install it? No, we did not. So this conveyor is a conveyor that is designed by Jet Air, and it's specifically designed to allow the air components to be inserted between the top and bottom belt. Okay, so the air components are actually inside here. That's correct. Wow. Okay, and so it must be they must be blowing up through that belt. Yes. Talk about the belt a little bit. So the belt is as well custom, and what it does is it actually is open celled, open mesh, however you want to refer to that, and it's 60%. So compared to a flat top, it is 60% open. And without that opening, uh, we couldn't get things dry as we do. No, we couldn't. And we need that high flow and pressure to be able to dry these containers. Ah. Now, I also see uh, something going on up here. It looks like it might be a hold down. I'm assuming it yeah. is. You guessed it, that is the exact name. It's a hold down, it holds things down. So the reason we needed that is actually to be able to dry in this six foot space, you have to use high pressure and flow, once again. So in order to do that, uh, we had to hold them down because if you didn't, those suckers are gonna be launched. So let's say some pet food cans are in mass flow and they're traveling down that belt and uh, air's coming up from the bottom they're gonna be launched. Exactly. And that's, and that's what the purpose of it, it holds everything down. Right, so that's what allows us to stay nice and compact and be able to utilize that high pressure and flow. So a system that isn't designed like this without a hold down usually takes up about 24 feet. So let's talk a little bit about how these things dry the sides of containers because those things are nested right next to each other, right? right? And they have these this little pattern or matrix that it creates how do we dry in there? Yeah, well, that's all exactly right. So the containers, uh, when they're fully nested against the conveyor, they're gonna have these gaps. They're gonna sit in between each other. What we do is utilize that as a matrix and we take our air components 
and we line each of the nozzles up with those holes so we can ensure top, bottom, and side drying. Wow, now this can dry a couple of different sizes, mm -hmm. hence it has uh, the uh, adjustment. Right. It also can handle different sizes for the matrix too, huh? Yeah, so whatever your conveyor width is, we're designing directly to that, and we adapt that matrix style drying for the width and containers. Oh, awesome. So now usually a jet air machine will have a control panel hanging off the edge. Right, right, right. What's going on here? Yeah, these are our armor blocks, and you're right. Typically, we just have the control panel sitting on the side here. This is a little more custom than that. So this is our uh, device I.O., and this is going to be able to communicate between our HMI and our machine. It's going to tell us everything we need to know about it. So on this screen, again, communicating through our armor blocks, we have this nice diagram. So you have a really good visual representation of what's going on in the machine. Whether we're talking about our MCPs, our conveyor, or the door interlocks, they are color-coded and will change. So you're able to see the status, and not only that, you know exactly where it's located. The second really great thing on this HMI is the PAC-ML standard for communication. This is developed by PMMI, and what it does is it allows any operator to come look at the status of this machine and know exactly where it is in the operational cycle. So that could be starting up, being in idle, being suspended. You don't have to question what part of the process the machine is in. Lastly, a really cool thing about this, we have a grace port down here. If you want to talk with the machine, you don't need to open up the door, come over to the grace port, you have your ethernet. You also have some 120 VAC for your laptop. Really nice. So thank you guys for joining us for the M2000 today. Rob, thanks for talking about it with me. All right, well thank you, Jay. And thank you for watching another Jet Air Share and Ship.